So for matrix chain multiplication, uh, what we are trying to talk about is if you have a set of matrices, maybe you have five of them, and maybe this one is a two by three, and this one might be a three by five, and this one might be a five by one, and this one might be a one by four, and this one might be a four by uh, six, we'll say. Um, the question is, what is the best way to order the multiplications that you have to do? So you might have to do, you could do, for example, A, B, and then C, D, E, or C, D, and then E, or you could do A, and then multiply that by B, C, D, E, which you might do by doing an order like that. And the number of multiplications total that will be necessary for this will be different depending on the order that you choose. So to give you an example, suppose that you start with just these two. So uh, if you had, if you have A times B, you have a case where it's two rows of three columns, and then this three by five is three rows of five columns. So if you have the result for this, since this is a 2 by 3 and this is a 3 by 5, the result will be a 2 by 5. And each of these results comes from multiplying three cases. You have this element times this element, plus this element times this element, plus this element times this element, and the result is stored there. So you have three multiplications for each of these elements, so there's three of, three each for two rows and five columns, for a total of two by three by five multiplications, for, which is 30. 30 multiplications to get just A, B. As we'll see in a minute, when we have more than one way of, uh, of, of multiplying, so like we could do A times B and then C, and that would give us the matrix A, B, C, or we could multiply B times C and then multiply by A. That would also give us A, B, C. So, as I mentioned just a moment ago, A, B takes 30 multiplications to, uh, to grab, and then getting B times C, following the same pattern, you might notice it was 2 times 3 times 5 to get AB. Doing B times C is the same pattern, you do 3 times 5 times 1. It's a total of 15 multiplications that are necessary to get BC. So if we do ABC, and we do it this way by doing AB first, we took, uh, 15, we took 30 multiplications to get AB, and then we didn't take any multiplications to get C, it was just given. And then to combine these two matrices, this time you've got a 2 by 5 matrix multiplied by a 5 by 1 matrix, so this gives you 2 times 5 times 1 is 10, multiplications, and then that is 40 total multiplications to get the, the answer. On the other hand, if you did it this way, by doing A, by multiplying BC first and then multiplying by A, you would have a 2 by 3 multiplied by a 3 by 1. So, we had no uh, no multiplications necessary to give, get A, it was just given. There were 15 multiplications necessary to get BC. And then in total, we have 
the 2 by 3 and the 3 by 1. So 2 times 3 times 1 is 6. And we end up with 21 uh, multiplications necessary to get ABC this way, whereas it would have taken 40 multiplications if we had chosen this order. So clearly, this is the more efficient way to, to calculate it. And then that says, okay, well, we have a way to calculate ABC in 21 multiplications. And specifically, we want to do that by A times BC. This can get to be a bit confusing if we don't have some sort of a table uh, to, to store the best ways to get each individual part. So that's what dynamic programming really is, is it's just a clever way to generate a couple of tables that store the best solution you've found so far for a given matrix, or a given, uh, a given part of the problem. And another table that stores which of the options you chose was actually best. And the two tables are called the M table and the S table. Now in the M table, you're storing the value representing how good the best solution was. For the S table, you're storing which solution was the best solution. Which solution was the best one. So, again, the M tables values would be things like this 30, the 15, the 21, the number of multiplications that we had to do. Whereas the S table would be the uh, the representation of, oh, it was A times BC, not AB times C. Uh, and we'll get into that in just a moment. So let's make space for two tables. I'll have the S table here, and I'll have the M table here. And there's going to be five rows and five columns. Okay. And we'll get into what the meanings of these are in just a moment. So, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And similarly, this also has five rows and five columns. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Now, we're not even going to bother using the lower half of this matrix, so we're going to ignore everything below the main diagonal. What I'm going to store here is the number of multiplications it took to get individual ones. These matrices were given, and so we won't be using them at all. Or we don't, we don't, use, we don't, there's no cost to get any of these. So zero, 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 zero. Those are all just given. The next ones, though, where this, by the way, this is matrix A, B, C, D, and E. So this guy here would be representing matrix AB. This one's BC, this one's CD, and this one's DE. Now initially, as we mentioned before, there's just no, there's no option. You, there's only one way to multiply A and B to get AB. And that way it took 30 multiplications. BC 
took 15. And we'll redo that in a moment. CD. This one would be a 5 by 1 by 4 is 20. And DE would be a 1 by 4 by 6, which is uh, 24. Now the next, the next diagonal that we fill in is where we actually start having to use dynamic programming. Up until now, we haven't even needed this table because there's only really been one solution to choose from, so it didn't really make any sense to, to say, well, which solution was best. It was always just the one. At this point, though, we need to start getting a little more formal. Now, if you look at Professor Bai's lecture notes, he gives you the exact formula that you use to fill in any of these tables. And what he does is he recognizes that, okay, these middle values always have to match. The threes match, the fives match, the ones match, the fours match. If they didn't match, then you couldn't, uh, you couldn't actually consider this a valid matrix chain. It couldn't, the multiplication wouldn't work. So what he does is he makes a P array that is defined by the dimensions in this matrix. So he would do 2, 3, 5, 1, 4, and 6. And then he defines this table according to this formula. He says that for M, I, J, that, oh, he uses a, a subscript actually, I, J, there's two different ways that he can define it. He defines it as zero if I is equal to J. And what I here is I is the row index and J is the column index. And he defines it as this expression that is a little bit a little bit difficult to to understand at first, but he defines it as basically the the cost to get your submatrices. So like if you were doing A times BC uh, in order to get ABC. What he does is he says, okay, it's the cost of this one and the cost of this one and then the cost to merge them together. And so he has those three parts. So the cost to merge them together is that same formula where you just multiply the number of rows in the first matrix by the shared edge and then by the number of columns in the second. So for ABC, for this exact specific case, to merge those, it would be a 2 by 3 and a 3 by 1, so you would get 2 times 3 times 1, and that would be the, the number to merge them, which is 6. And then the cost to get A was 0, and then the cost to get BC was uh, 15 from previous calculations for a grand total of 0 plus 15 plus 6 is 21. So, in order to write that formally, I'm going to pull up his lecture slides so that I don't write it incorrectly, but you're basically doing the same thing. You're just adding the cost of calculating the matrices with the cost to uh, to get, to merge them together. So the formula that he gives you says that you're going to take the minimum of uh, a set of items, and he's defining a new variable k, where he says that i is less than or equal to k, which is less than j. So basically he's creating a variable k that can be that starts at i and goes up to j, but doesn't actually reach j. 
And then the value that you're trying to find the minimum of is defined as m of i k plus m of k plus 1 j plus p of i minus 1 times p of k times p of j. So again, this part represents the previously calculated cost of one of the matrices that you're going to multiply. This is the, per this is the previously calculated cost of the other matrix that you're going to multiply, and this is the cost of actually, this is the number of multiplications that are necessary to do that. So, if we take the case of ABC, like we did before, the two possibilities should be A times BC, or AB times C. If we chose A times BC, then, as we mentioned before, that takes zero multiplications to do A. It takes, uh, BC is, is 15 multiplications. And then merging them together, we have a 2 by 3 and a 3 by 1 for 6 additional ones to get us 21 multiplications in this way. If we do it the other way, doing AB first, that took us 30 multiplications to get AB, 0 multiplications for C, and then to merge AB with C, it's a 2 by 5 and a 5 by 1, so 2 times 5 times 1 is 10, And that gives us a total of 40 multiplications necessary to do it in this order, and only 21 to do it in this order. This expression is simply a way of writing these two values. It's saying, okay, in this spot where i is equal to 1 and j is equal to 3, we have two possibilities. k could be equal to 1 or 2. Those are the two values that that are between i and j. If k is 1, then we have m of uh, 1, 1, which is this one, the 0, and that's our 0 here. If we have m of k plus 1, j, that gives us 2, comma, 3, which is row 2, column 3, which is 15. That's our 15 here. And then this here is looking up in this table. So we have P of 0, which is 2, times P of 1, which is 3, times P of uh, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, which is 1. So 2 times 3 times 1 is 6. That gives us the 6 and that gives us our total of 21. Likewise, if we went through it with k equals 2, we would get this exact same calculation, and then we choose the minimum of those options, which was 21, and so in our M table we now know there's a way to calculate ABC in 21 multiplications. The other part that we need to store right now that's very critical is which option did we choose? What was our k value? And we chose k equals 1 in this case. It was the one with the 21. So we're going to write that over here so that we can remind ourselves later how, which choice we chose for, uh, for, a, for, for k for that one. Excuse me, was it 1? Yes. If we continue this, we can do it for every element in the table. So 
for this one, which is the equivalent of doing uh, b times c times d, let's consider k equals 1. So this, this spot is i equals 1, or i equals 2, j equals 4. So k can be equal to uh, k can be equal to 2, or k can be equal to 3. But it can't be equal to 4 because it's supposed to be strictly less than j. So if k is 2, then we're going to look at m of 2, 2 plus m of 3, 4 plus p, p1 times p2 times p, p4. m of 2, 2 is 0. m of 3, 4 is 20. And then p1 times p2 times p4 is 3 times 5 times 4, which is 15 times 4 is 60. And then when we add these up, 0 plus 20 plus 60, we get 80. On the other hand, if we choose k equals 3, then we have m of 2, 3 plus m of uh, 4, 4, plus p2, no, p1, excuse me, it's i minus 1, times uh, p3, times p4. So 2, 3 is 15. 4, 4 is 0, and p1 times p3 times p4 is 3 times 1 times 4, which is 12, for a total of 27 multiplications. So k equals 3 is the obviously better option than k equals 2, and we will choose we will choose to store that one. So 27 multiplications here, and the k value that we had to use was k equals 3, so that goes here. Continuing along. To calculate CDE, we have um, I'm not going to I'm not going to continue exactly with that. No, I can. It's fine. M of okay. We have I is equal to three. J is equal to five. So K can be equal to three or four. If K is equal to three. Then we have m of 3, 3, which is 0, m of 4, 5, which is 24, and the cost to merge them together, which is two, p2, which is 5, times uh, p3, which is 1, and times uh, p5, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is 6. So that's a total of 5 times 6 is 30, equals 54, for the value of k equals 3. For k equals 4, we have m of 3, 3, which is 0, plus m of uh, 4, oops, did 
3, 4, sorry. This one is m of 3, 4, which is 20. This one is m of uh, 5, 5, which is 0. And then we have p2 times p4 times p5. So 5 times 4 times 6 is 20 times 6 is 120 for a total of 140. k equals 3 is the better option. So we put 54 here, and we put 3 for our value of k that we used here, and then we move back. For this case, this is equivalent to uh, calculating ABCD. Doing ABCD, you can do it in several ways. You could do it A times BCD, or you could do it AB and then CD, and then multiply those together. Or you could do A times B, and then multiply that by C, and then multiply it by D. There's, there's several ways. So we should expect three values of K, of K to be possible, and there will be. We're going to choose I equals 1, J equals 4, and so K can be equal to 1, 2, or 3. If k equals 1, then we have m of 1, 1, which is 0, plus m of 2, 4, which is 27, plus p, p0 times p1 times p4, which is 2, times 3 times 4, which is 6 times 4 is 24, equals 51. k equals 2. We would have m of 1, 2, which is 30. m of uh, 2, 4, which is 27. Seems odd that I'm getting the same thing. Oh no, excuse me, it's m of 3, 4, which is 20. And p0 times p2 times p4, which is 2 times 5 times 4, for a total of 40, which is 90. For k equals 3, we have um, we have m of 1, 3, which is 21, and m of 4, 4, which is 0, plus p0 times p3 times p4, which is 2 times 1 times 4, which is 8, which is a total of 29 multiplications. So, just to review, this is the case where, where k is 1, you're multiplying, um, you're multiplying A times uh, BCD when you are in, so it's like this. If you are multiplying with K equals 2, then you are doing uh, AB times CD. And for k equals 3, you are doing abc times d. So that's why this one is the 0, and this one is the 21. This is the equivalent of abc, this one is the d. And in this case, doing abc times d is the best option. So we have 29.
Ah, and uh, 29 was where k equals 3, so we will mark that k equals 3 was how we got there in our s table. Just two more, and I'm as ready to be done with it as you are. So if i is equal to 2 and j is equal to 5, then we have k could be equal to 2, 3, or 4. If k equals 2, then we have m of 2, 2, which is 0. m of 3, 5, which is 54. And uh, p0, p1 times p2 times p5 is 3 times 5 times 6, which is 15 times 6 is 90, equals 144. If k equals 3, then we have m of 2, 3, which is 15, m of uh, 4, 5, which is 24, and then we have p1 times p3 times p5 is 3 times 1 times 6, which is 18. So 15 plus 24 is 39, plus 18 is 57. And then we also have k equals 4. So this gives us i is 2, k is 4, m of 2, 4 would be 27. This one gives us um, 5, 5, which is 0. And then the cost to put them together is P1, P4, P5 is 3 times 4 times 6 is 12 times 6 is 72, which is 99. Of the three options, K equals 3 was the best one. Again, it won't always be, but it was in this case. And 57 was the score of the best option. One last one. If i is equal to 1 and j is equal to 5, then we can have k is equal to 1, 2, 3, or 4. If k is equal to 1, then we are going to have m of 1, 1, which is 0. We're going to have m of 2, 5, which is 57. We're going to have p0, p1, p5, which is 2 times 3 times 6 which is 36, which is 63, 83, no, 93. K is equal to 2, would give us M of 1, 2, which is 30, plus M of uh, 3, 5, which is 54. plus the cost to put it together, which is P0 times P1, P2 times P5, which is 2 times 5 is 10 times 6 is 60, which is 144, which is clearly not the best option. K equals 3 gives us M of uh, three, uh, 1, 3, which is 21. 
It also gives us uh, M of 4, 5, which is 24. And it gives us P0 times P3 times P5 is 2 times 1 times 6, which is 12, which is uh, 45 plus 12 is 60, 57, which is pretty good. K is equal to 4 would give you M of uh, 1, 4, which is 29, plus M of 5, 5, which is 0, plus the cost to put it together, which is P0 times P4 times P5, which is 2 times 4 times 6, which is 8 times 6, which is 48, I hope. 37, 77. So the best option again was k equals 3. I swear it's not always k equals 3. Otherwise this algorithm would be much easier. And the result, although I just erased it, was 57. So it is possible to calculate A, B, C, D, E in only 57 multiplications, whereas some of the other options were as high as 144. So for the last step, all we need to know is how to look up how did we get the entire matrix A, B, C, D, E in 57 uh, multiplications. And to do that, we have to look at our S table. So, in our S table, we see that when we calculated this 57, we had a k value of 3. That means that these are the two multiplication, these are the two matrices that we multiplied together. So, which ones were they when k was 3? Well, i was 1, j was 5, and k was 3. So, we have m of uh, 1, 3, which is this one here. And we have M of uh, 4, 5, which is this one here. So, this matrix is simply D times E. So we had A, B, C, D, E, and it's split into D, E. And this one is matrix, this one we'll get into in a moment, but if this one's DE, then this one had to be ABC. And of course, doing D times E, there's just the one way to do it. But then, to determine how we got ABC, we have to look here and see, well, okay, where did this come from? So we come back and we say, well, at that same position in the table, K was 1. So we have I is 1 j is 3, k is 1. So it's m of 1, 1, which is this 0 here, representing a. And then the other one can only be b, c, because there's only one multiplication going on. And so first we're going to multiply b, c, b times c, then we're going to multiply times a, and then we're going to multiply all of that times d times e which has to be already computed. And once done, that gives us A, B, C, D, E. To write it in, uh, in parenthetical form, it would be A times B, C, all of that's in parentheses, and then times D, E, with that being in parentheses. And I think I have an extra set. Uh, I don't need that one. Okay. So doing this matrix multiplication in this order, we do it in 57 multiplications. If we had tried some random order, we could have gotten as bad as 144, or maybe even higher. So obviously you wouldn't really do this on five matrices 
and you pro at least certainly not when they're this small. Computers are more than capable of whipping through these multiplications very quickly. But if this had been 2,000 and 3,000, and this had been 6,000 and so forth, then the efficiency gained from going to something like 144 billion multiplications to 57 billion multiplications could be significant. And that's why you have to learn it.